The uh, there's an analyst at J.P. Morgan, Rod Hall, who says uh, that in fact, when we go to the next iPhone without the built-in hardware fingerprint reader, that Apple will replace Touch ID with 3D face recognition. Yeah, is that credible? I, I'm still yes. a, I'm still of a mind that I'd love multiple points of authentication if I can get it. Yeah, like the more the better for me. Yeah, I mean it's it's nice that you can choose to. Uh, just like on my iPad, I can use Touch ID because it's really, really fast. And when that fails, I can use a, a passcode, not only a passcode, but a really, really super long passcode that will be will take 80 million years to guess. Uh, I would love it if there were as secure of a way of just doing facial recognition again, just by whatever, whatever it has to happen uh, so that I never really have to worry about the security of my device. Like the, the feature that Renee uh, keeps uh, keeps mentioning, just the feature of I'm wearing an Apple Watch, the Apple Watch has been authenticated, it has not been removed from my wrists, so the phone says, okay, I'm good. Go ahead, you're unlocked. The, so uh, multiple, multiple vectors. The J.P. Morgan analyst Hall also said that having a 3D laser scanner in an iPhone could be beneficial for augmented reality or virtual reality. He says Apple is likely to eventually open up a 3D scanning API to developers who could use it to do everything from determining your shoe size for online orders to helping make sure you're properly fitted on your bike. That's an interesting application of this. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think that's something that they would – they, they made a big, big, big brush fire out of deleting a headphone jack saying that we need as much <laughs> room as possible. I don't think that they would do it. I think that they would add uh, a, add a, a pair of 3D cameras to the front to make authentication much easier. I don't think that they would do that for a feature that they don't think is going to revolutionize the device. And I don't think that 3D scanning is going to do that. Uh, but having some sort of a 3D capture would be a really, really good API to add so that you can just uh, toss, the, uh, uh, toss the phone inside a shoe that has good depth perception, multiple cameras, and being able to simply wave it around a house uh, to get a read of the room or even capture a 3D object. Um, it's a, you know, and there, there's so many ways they could do that. They could uh, have that too. Remember that uh, I, I keep thinking about the uh, the, the the Android uh, Fire, excuse me, the the Fire Phone from Amazon, that was uh, just a huge colossal failure. But it had a lot of interesting ideas that if a more grown up company were to implement them, might make a nice phone. They made a, uh, for instance, one of the things they added to the user interface was that they used the three, the uh, the two cameras that it had facing forward, so they could see not only uh, not only 3D of your face, but also get a better idea of where are where are you looking and where is your face in regard to the phone. So, given that iOS, one of the design uh, pillars of iOS is that it's all on layers. You have sheets on top of sheets on top of sheets. One way of communicating those layers is transparency. But another way is to give that parallel X effect a little bit, but make it actually <laughs> actually tie into uh, where the angle of the screen is as opposed to your uh, to, uh, in relation to your eyes. So there's a lot of if that, that's putting two cameras facing forward that were just good enough to simply get a read of your face that could open up a lot of interesting ideas for user interface as well. Hall might uh, have some have a little bit of a credibility gap because he also said, that he thought uh, that they would announce the new phone perhaps at WWDC, which they haven't done mm, since 2010. Yeah. That seems. On the other hand, with all the with the drumbeat of rumors, I mean, lots of them. Maybe Apple would maybe like to do a little bit of announcing. I see no reason for them to announce in June. Right? They announce early only if it's going to take a while to get FCC approval. Yeah, or, or if something. they have significant changes for developers, but even then they don't have to show off new hardware. They can just sort of right. hint at it, like they did with size classes before they did the bigger iPhone. They could talk about the yeah. next. They Remember, could talk about iOS 11 at WWDC, and that would be yeah. sufficient, right? This this yeah, this this isn't like uh, Google I/O where they will send a thousand developers home with brand new hardware if they think that <laughs> that's what's required. Their Apple is Apple knows they're going to get people on board, uh, and the people that are really really important. They will either be seated beforehand, or they will say, "Guess what? We've got, we've got your we've got your room for the next six weeks at this yeah. beautiful beautiful inn that's next to the campus, so that you can come to this locked office uh, eight hours to ten hours a day to develop your software to make sure it works on the on the latest har the hardware." So no, it would be it would be such a such a huge departure from everything we know about Apple if we were to see any iPhone hardware any time before September. How about? Um uh, let's see. Red iPhones. <laughs> yeah, I'd like red, white, red iPhones. It'd be nice. The, uh, uh like, I guess Min Ming Chi Kuo is also saying that he thinks that the new 5.8 inch iPhone and 
by the way. 5.8 inches, also speculation, will feature, quote, other biometric technologies that replace the current fin replace the current fingerprint recognition. 5.8 is just technology. going bezel to bezel. It's not, a, it's not a bigger size. It is just going edge to edge on the current iPhone. So he says yep. that to distinguish between a larger one or a smaller one. So the 7S and the 7S Plus will be pretty much, at least it's assumed they'll be pretty much what we have now, just the next generation. But the iPhone 8, quote unquote, or iPhone X or iPhone whatever they want to call it, iPhone Pro, would be the same size as an iPhone 7, but would have edge-to-edge -edge screen. And that sort of works out to 5.8 inches. I do like this. Uh, another analyst is, <laughs> at this point, you know, everybody's just throwing stuff <laughs> against the wall, says <laughs> that maybe the idea is to create a two-factor verification system, which I kind of like. I kind of like that yeah. idea. Yeah. You mentioned that, Renee. Yeah, it's great for um, why, why take you know government. if you don't have to take one out, can you still do fingerprint recognition if the home button is now uh, an on-screen button? Yeah, the biggest concern for for most people is the accessibility because right now it's it's already a virtual home button. I mean, they got rid of the button last year in right. kind of a sneaky way, uh, but they left a little dent in it so that people who did have lowered or no vision could still feel it uh, if it actually goes into the screen because they can just pave over that uh, and and make it a. So you still a, have a, a sensor, area. but it's underneath yeah, you the still screen. have the same. Thing. Yeah, so the camera would just shoot up through the screen. Uh, but again, would you be able to feel that if you had no low vision, which is where this yeah. new rumor about a sensor uh, area where there'd be a sort of a separate area below where it had virtual buttons that wouldn't necessarily be screen real estate. It could maybe be shaped or, or uh, feel different enough that people who have lower no vision could still feel it. Uh, yeah, but I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be shocked if they haven't prototyped putting the sensor on the back, just like, uh, the, like a lot of different Android phones do, particularly because that's historically where the Apple logo goes. So what could be more interesting Intimate, then you touch the Apple logo from the back. Touch your uh, Apple. <laughs> exactly. You put, put, put a little bit more of a, a little bit of an indentation. Uh, it's there's so many great things that happen when, when you put something like this on the back of a phone. Even when the first the first Motorola phone I had that didn't have the touch didn't have the touch sensor there. It was just a little divot. Such a simple idea. But not only does it allow you to have a round back that will lay flat and not wobble when it's on the table, but also it allows you when you're taking it out of your pocket to orient it in your hand just by feel. So I take it out of my pocket and I know that I'm, I'm holding it the right side up instead of upside down. So I'd be shocked if they weren't even weren't even considering it, if, given that the by far the most interesting thing they can do that is practical, realistic, and has a million benefits is to make the screen as keep the keep the phone the same size, but make the screen bigger, 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 which means that anything that is not a screen on your current phone suddenly goes away or, or finds another place to live.